Welcome to Clinic Pasteur for uh, this uh, Evolute uh, uh, transfemoral TAVI case. My name is Nicolas Dumonte. To my right is my partner and friend Didier Cheche. Uh, will perform the case uh, uh, with us to, today. And uh, also Florine, our nurse, who will help us with uh, Alison, the second nurse who is in the room. And uh, this is all for the team. It's our regular setting uh, for a, a transfemoral TAVI. Okay, so today we will uh, share a transformable TAVI case with the Evolute Pro platform. So here is the patient uh, today, 87 years old lady, 95 uh, kilograms for 160 centimeters with a past history of coronary artery disease that has been uh, treated with uh, multiple cabbage. Uh, she also have a, uh, has a uh, severe uh, chronic kidney disease with uh, creatinine clearance. You're going to see that on the right part of the screen at 26 milliliters per minute. And uh, she is also uh, on, uh, uh, she also has a, a permanent atrial fibrillation. So this lady has, became, has become uh, symptomatic with uh, NYHA class 3 diaspnea related to a severe aortic stenosis. As you can see, the, uh, the mean uh, surface, the average surface was 0.8 centimeters square with a mean gradient of 27 millimeters of mercury related to a depressed LDEF with an uh, ejection fraction of 35%. Uh, the systolic pulmonary arterial pressure is normal. Uh, so, as I said before, on the ECG, uh, we, can, uh, we could identify a permanent atrial fibrillation combined to a left bundle branch block. Uh, overall, the STS score was, uh, is 8.7% for this uh, lady, so uh, the goal is uh, definitely to treat her with uh, TAVI, given the fact that she is more symptomatic than before and she is at extreme uh, risk for surgery. So here is the CD assessment, and you can see the, uh, from the peripheral vasculature uh, standpoint that there is calcium, uh, but we don't have any uh, circumferential uh, calcium spot uh, all around the uh, the tree, and the mean uh, diameter uh, is about is slightly above six millimeter on both sides. So we're going to go through the right axis because there is no major tortuosity, and the vest the diameters are fine. So uh, quite important when we uh, go for the uh, aortic root assessment, uh, we can clearly understand that this is a small anatomy. Uh, we have a, a perimeter derived diameter of the annulus that is uh, slightly below 22 millimeters, 21.8. Are, uh, exactly in the tubular configuration as compared to the LVOT, uh, 21.8 millimeters, so definitely a small anatomy. This has an impact on the, the final valve choice. Uh, the coronary height is uh, uh, okay for this, for this lady, but she has also uh, patent grafts on the, uh, the free vessels. So uh, as we're going to see uh, at the end, so we're going to work with that cusp overlap uh, view, and this is one of the view that we've obtained uh, from the city software. Uh, it's the RAO codal, RAO 20 codal uh, 15, and this should provide a nice uh, overlap of the right and the left uh, cusp, the, the right and the left uh, coronary cusp, just to be able to safely deploy the device at target, avoiding to be too deep, and most importantly, achieving commercial alignment. So here is the strategy uh, today before uh, ending over to you, uh, Nico. So first we're gonna do as usual an optimized transfemoral TAVI uh, with a right uh, uh, common femoral artery and right radial axis, ego guided puncture, double uh, proglide for preclosure. Uh, the valve uh, will be uh, enabled Pro 26 because in this type of small anatomy, we have to achieve uh, better uh, hemodynamics, hemodynamics as uh, good as we can, and uh, self-expanding supranular platforms seems to be a good, a good thing. Uh, given the size of the sinuses of Valsalva, 29, and the sinotubular junction, a 26 would fit appropriately. And another uh, argument is the fact that the patient is grafted uh, coronary-wise, so the risk of coronary uh, uh, impairment is, uh, is quite small for this uh, lady. So, commissural alignment, systematically and cusp overlap uh, view, cusp overlap technique uh, are going to be the combination for this, uh, for this case today. So thank you, Didier. Here is the, the setting of uh, the patient as you, as you previously described, the conventional setting. So main access through the right uh, common femoral uh, uh, artery 
with uh, echo guidance for the puncture. The, the sheath is already inside and our secondary access, as we routinely do, is a radial artery. So it's a six trench long sheath uh, that ends in the brachial artery and, and that allows to, um, to have a hemodynamic recording on the um, arterial pressure while having a five French long pigtail inside that uh, will be used for the angiography. So Didier, we can have a look at the, the first angio uh, sh uh, shot that we have done in the predicted uh, predicted projection uh, by the CT scan of uh, cusp overlap. And uh, yeah, this is a nice uh, pro uh, projection because it's, it quite correlates with what we uh, predicted from the CT scan. And we have a nice overlap of both the, the right and the left uh, coronary cusps. And we can clearly see uh, the commissure between uh, overlapped cusps and the non-coronary cusp that is uh, sitting on the utmost uh, left bottom part of the of the um, the fluoro screen so uh, the pigtail is uh, nicely sitting in that non-coronary cusp there is a small gap due to the calcium but we can clearly see what is the what is the location of the analyst so i think it's the good it's a good projection to uh, to deploy but okay. let's uh, start with the uh, uh, by crossing the valve yeah thank you didier so in such, uh, let's say, small anatomy, our routine combination for crossing is a, a small curve on platz left, L1, rather than L2 that we use for, uh, for longer or larger anatomy, um, and a regular O35 straight wire. So few attempts, so you see that, uh, and uh, we saw that in the CT scanner, that it was quite heavily calcified. I'm mapping from the left to the right uh, side. Didier, in case of uh, failure of this approach, what, what is your second option? Well, it's clear here that you have um, two uh, main challenges. First, uh, the small aspect of the anatomy, and, for, and second, the uh, uh, calcium at the sinotubular junction. So moving, manipulating uh, the implants left one can be challenging. Uh, so I would keep the implants left one if it was more difficult, but as you are highly experienced, it didn't took a lo lot of time. But it would have been could have been an implants left one and a straight uh, slippery hydrophilic wire like the thermo uh, stiff straight, or sometimes we could downsize uh, downsize the catheter, uh, moving to implants 0.75. Uh, once we've crossed, uh, our routine uh, uh, procedure um, is to record the uh, uh, pressures LV and aortic pressure at the baseline, and we'll redo that at the end. So I let you comment what what we have currently. So quite interestingly, uh, despite the uh, depressed LVF, we have a significant peak-to-peak -peak, uh, gradient. Uh, it was uh, close to uh, 30 millimeters of mercury. We have a diastolic aortic pressure that is uh, 50, uh, 50, and uh, LVD that is uh, close to be uh, 15 between uh, 10 and 15 millimeters of mercury. So we are noticeable is the heart rate. That, that is quite uh, fast. Uh, so we have to uh, keep this in mind if we want to, to match that, to compare that to what we obtained post deployment. Uh, but we have, uh, okay, we, we don't have a, we have a big gradient and the diastolic arctic pressure is, uh, is quite nice. So we should keep that as a reference. Okay, thank you. So we're going now to insert our routines LV stiff uh, wire pre shade that is a safari small. And we deploy it in the LV in aerial projection as usual. It's true that it uh, most of the time nicely adapts to the shape of the left ventricle, and it's uh, even if you move it a little bit, what is required uh, at certain points of the deployment, it gets back to the initial position quite easily. So we are set. So yeah. we can go for the deployment now. Yeah, let's go. So Didier, we're about to insert the the device in, in the patient. Yeah. Uh, so, um, as we said, we're going to combine commissural alignment uh, and the cusp overlap. So, to achieve a, uh, an appropriate commissural alignment, given what we've seen on the CT scan, uh, the, what we're going to do is to rotate at 3 o'clock the flush port of the uh, delivery catheter. So, we're going to rotate it at 3 o'clock. So, you see, starting from 12 to 3, and we're going to keep it as is while we track food through the, uh, the outer. Okay, thank you. So valve is now in the thoracic descending. You help me crossing the arch. Yeah. 
And if we focus on the uh, uh, heart marker, yeah. we can see that it's, it is on the external curvature of the aorta. Okay. And what we saw, DDI, is a little bit of friction at the, at the, um, the, the place of the sinotubular junction. That is totally understandable. Yeah. So it's a collaboration between both operators. You help me by pulling a little bit uh, um, more than uh, usually in order to get a little bit away from the, the, um, the STJ and for me to cross and to go. So exactly. In LAO, we see the, the heart marker that is at the outer curvature of a, of a capture. And if uh, we go now into the uh, cusp of a lab projection, which was RAO uh, codo. Yeah. So did you have several observations? So the projection, you made a comment already about that. Yeah, so the cusp of the lab view is fine. So what we're going to, we, we see that we are nicely aligned with the, the, the marker band. We're going to start with the marker band close to the mid portion of the pigtail. And most importantly, while uh, the device will track through the, the landing zone towards the landing zone is to keep it just below the analyst uh, with the inflow portion just one or two millimeters below the analyst. Yeah, that will be our target. So let's go. Because so, you see that there is some kind of some amount of regurge. So while you're doing that, DJ, I just let uh, the prosthesis advance towards the LV a little bit. Okay, let's inject here just to see if we are fine. Oh, I'm okay with this, okay? Uh, this depth. Okay. So we are reaching node two. Yeah. Node three at 120 control yeah. pacing. And this is going to be also beneficial. Thank you, Alison. Okay. And I'm going to open then very gently. So the position is uh, is nice. We have a little bit of parallax, but uh, it seems that we are uh, okay. Yeah. In terms of depth, maybe let's go to to, to the LAO. Yeah, projection. So to... we're going to go to a LAO projection. Par contre, elle est ouais, okay. niveau hémodynamique. Okay, let's record that. Yeah, the position is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've, um, I'm happy with this position. So I think we can uh, yeah. we can release the the valve here. So always the same procedure. We've draw the pigtail here in such a small anatomy. I like to deploy in LAO because it allows you to better estimate the amount of uh, uh, tension you have on the capture. Yeah. Uh, okay, you can go. To so the... let's uh, first I will uh, withdraw the the wire. Okay. And second, I will let you uh, okay. correct the coaxiality. Well, what's what I'm doing? Okay, nice. So we still have one hook that is attached, but yeah. here is okay. So okay, so I'm gonna withdraw the catheter. Something that is uh, before we detach everything. Let's see the the heart rate. So we have a left bundle branch block, but the heart rate uh, uh, it's okay. She is in atrial fibrillation, so the heart rate varies a little bit. So there is no AV block, so it's uh, okay. I think we can disconnect now. Yeah. And we see we'll we'll review that while doing the the control injection. And but we see uh, due to this particular anatomy and again the DSTJ the constraint that we have a kind of constraint at the the upper part of the skirt or of the, of the mid part sorry of the frame. But it's I think it's not an issue. We we record the gradients. We we'll control everything. But I don't think it's uh, it's an issue here. Okay. So let's uh, insert the uh, the shift, the 16 French shift. Let's yeah. put it back and then record the hemodynamics, and then we will assess the regurg. But hemodynamically wise, everything uh, came back to uh, to the initial state, so we can compare both pre and post. Okay. Good. So Didier, after uh, shift insertion and uh, pigtail exchange with uh, the Safari wire in the LV, we have now the post implantation hemodynamic uh, recording that we have. So it's um, it's quite reassuring. First, we have the same heart rate, so we can compare pre and post hemodynamics. First, and quite interestingly, there is zero gradient for this uh, patient, despite the very small anatomy and all the calcium uh, burden. Uh, second, the diastolic aortic pressure uh, is close to be uh, 50, so matching what we had at the start of the uh, the procedure. The LV and diastolic pressure is uh, exactly in the same uh, range. It was uh, 20. It's slightly even below now uh, at the end. 
Uh, so um, hemodynamic wise, it's reassuring. Let's see uh, with the uh, angio if we have some kind of uh, regurgitation and decide if uh, we need to uh, post dilate or not. So did you hear the uh, here is the final angio in uh, in the cusp of the lab view. So we can make several comments. First, uh, our depth. It's perfect. That it's is a, good, huh? Yeah. It's, it's two, good. Two millimeters. Yeah, two millimeters. So it's the, good in the NCS. Um, there is maybe tri trivial yeah. uh, paravalvular leak, but there nothing. Is, uh, uh, nothing. There yeah, is uh, nothing almost, almost zero. And if we watch the um, the commissural alignment, it's uh, it's yeah. also appropriate. Yeah. Because we have the uh, the C tab that that's facing the uh, coronary side of the anatomy yeah. uh, in the RAO codal, and if we watch the now the LAO projection, we have. Yeah. Uh, I'm going uh, to record without injection. Yeah. And now we clear, clearly see the the C tab in the uh, inner aspect of the uh, uh, curvature, RT curvature. So the alignment is good. It's okay. very it's very nice. So. So uh, Didier, let's let's close the, the uh, arterial uh, arterial cut down uh, approach. Yep. <laughs> it's no longer a cut down. <laughs> arterial approach and uh, and uh, summarize the case. Okay, nice. Didier, so fer femoral artery closing was uh, was successful. No issue regarding that. Maybe you can summarize the, what we've seen during this case. I think this was a very uh, first challenging and interesting case that uh, highlighted all the potential uh, benefits of a self-expanding supranular platform. We uh, we had to treat a small lady with a very small anatomy, a small uh, auric annulus, small LVOT, and extremely calcified uh, sinotubular junction. We could see how with the cusp of a lab technique, stable was the deployment of the Evolute platform two millimeters below the annulus without any um, conduction disturbance. So uh, congratulations, uh, Nico. Thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> Madison, no, Florine, <laughs> Alison, and uh, see you all soon. Bye. Bye-bye.